Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this insightful analysis, Lynette Song delves into the complex world of private equity, exposing the precarious game of managing debt with more debt. As the financial landscape undergoes shifts, private equity firms are resorting to questionable tactics, raising concerns about the stability of the global economy. In this video, we'll dissect Lynette Zhang's expert commentary on the troubling practices within the private equity sector, exploring the implications for investors, financial institutions, and the broader economy. Lynette begins by unraveling the intricate mechanisms at play within private equity. She highlights the alarming trend of making loan payments with additional debt, a risky maneuver that seems counterintuitive. Despite the apparent financial prowess of these entities, Zong warns against the inherent dangers of relying on such a strategy. Private equity firms, in a bid to maintain liquidity, resort to a practice known as payment in kind, PK, essentially paying off existing debt obligations with more debt. The consequences of this approach are far-reaching, as it not only increases leverage but also poses significant challenges in accurately assessing the scale of the issue. Zong emphasizes the elusive nature of PIK debt, shedding light on the opacity of private loans, which often go unreported. The lack of transparency in this market raises red flags, making it difficult to gauge the extent of the problem until it's too late. Bloomberg's data tracking reveals a staggering $73 billion in outstanding PIK borrowings, predominantly rated below investment grade, with some coupons surpassing 20%. This revelation underscores the urgency of addressing the hidden risks associated with private equity practices. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Private equity makes loan payments with more debt to keep cash. <laughs> yeah, they're keeping cash, and I already showed you that level of cash to their debt. But what they're also doing is funny business around the contracts, meaning payment in kind or PIK, right? Debt shows up in LBO terms to clinch deals. Usage soars as a temporary fix until interest rate spikes ease. So when you hear the Fed talking about higher for longer, this is a big, huge problem. And this even reduces even, even some, whatever a little bit of investor, investment protections still remain. Payment in kind means that they are paying debt with debt kind means the same thing. So they're paying debt with more debt. Yeah. You should feel really, really safe about that. At 16% interest, the total amount owned in cash can double in five years. It's hard to pin down how much PIK. So payment in kind is circulating because private loans aren't always reported. Shocker. Bloomberg's database tracks at least $73 billion outstanding on various types of PIK borrowings. Almost all of it rated below investment grade. And some coupons are topping 20%. You cannot fix a too much debt problem with even more debt. It simply exacerbates the problem. And it doesn't matter who you are, what, even me, even I'm more prepared than almost anybody I know, and I'm still going to be impacted by it. Not so much in a negative way because I have my food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. I have my bug out, so I'm luckier than most. But I'm telling you, what are you doing to protect yourself? This is what you should be doing. This, along with all of the other levels of the mantra, building community is arguably, after you have your money right, the most important part of the mantra, building that community to support your ability to sustain a reasonable standard of living now, globally or locally, and to prevent the full surveillance, full control economy they have in mind of us, look for us globally.
As Zhang navigates through the financial landscape, she warns of the transfer of risks from regulated banks to unsuspecting investors, particularly pension funds and insurers. The shift, occurring since the global financial crisis, raises pertinent questions about oversight and regulatory frameworks. The analysts suggest that regulators may only intervene post-crisis, leaving investors vulnerable to the aftermath of hidden leverage. Drawing attention to PIMCO's alarm, Zhang spotlights the under-regulated nature of private credit markets and the associated lack of transparency and oversight. The repercussions of this opacity become apparent as investors, including pension funds and insurance companies, express intentions to increase allocations to private credit. Zhang questions the wisdom of such a move, considering the inherent risks and the potential for a crisis that could impact retirement funds worldwide. All accounting tricks do is they hide and maybe they postpone it because of the awareness is just not there. But you have to understand this is a very opaque market. It means you can't really, it's hard to pin down how much PIK debt is circulating. It's hard to pin down how much private equity debt is circulating. So it comes out of the blue and by the time you know it, it's too late to do anything. But hey, PIMCO sounds the alarm and PIMCO is a big bond fund under regulated private credit markets. Lack of transparency and oversight seem posing investor risks. You think? Risk is transferred from regulated banks to pensions and insurers. And what that really means to you. You realize that? There's been an evolution into private markets. Before the global financial crisis, the risk was inside the banks. Now it's outside. There's been this big transfer of risk to investors. The question is, when will the regulator start looking? After the next big crisis. That's when they always start looking. Because, look, I can't prove this. This is just my opinion. But they're all in this together. You got the one percenters and then you got the 99 percenters, the rest of us. Who typically eats it in the shorts? We do. This is risk transfer 101. Regulators aren't going to look at it until, until the fox is already out of the hen house. It's staggering when you look at what happened since the global financial crisis and how much more leverage there is in the system. The difference is, is that this leverage is more hidden even than the leverage that's hidden inside of the banking system. We have no flipping clue where all of this leverage is hiding. No clue at all. How does that make you feel? makes me darn glad I got food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Let me tell you that because the time to get prepared is while you still have that ability. And I've been working on it for a very long time. The majority of investment managers at pension funds, insurance companies, hmm, who's really in the pension funds and insurance companies, family offices and wealth managers surveyed by blah, 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 said they plan to even increase allocations to private credit in the next year. Let's double down because insanity is doing the same thing and getting this different results. Are they not paying attention to how opaque these markets are? No. They're just like lemmings. They just go with the flow because they're not really at risk. You and I are. We're the ones that are at risk. Australia's pension funds, ranked as the world's fourth largest retirement pool, are showcased as a case study. As they seek new avenues for deploying record inflows, the video suggests a dangerous reliance on private credit. Zong critiques the justification of floating rate debt as a hedge against inflation, asserting that the strategy may exacerbate the debt spiral, ultimately jeopardizing retirement funds. Lynette Zong emphasizes the urgency of preparedness in the face of a potential financial crisis. She advocates for a holistic approach that extends beyond financial assets, emphasizing the importance of community building and self-sustainability. As private equity continues to engage in risky financial maneuvers, Zhang's expert insights serve as a call to action. 
prompting individuals to assess their financial strategies and fortify themselves against the unforeseen challenges lurking in the opaque world of private equity. Private credit tops wish list for Australia's biggest investors. And who might that be? Pension funds. I guess this is one way, and I'm going to talk about this more going into the new year. Pension funds seek to increase allocations to this asset class. Who's impacted by these pension funds? The normal person, right? The normal person. And so, you know, I guess this could be one way to say, well, who could see that coming and take care of the big, huge retirement crisis that we're already experiencing? Floating rate debt deals help hedge against inflation. This is their flipping justification. How might a crisis in private credit impact retirement funds? So they're saying, no, no, this is a hedge because as I showed you before with CLOs, that's all floating rate debt. So the theory is, is that it pays you more because it's floating rate debt, but the corporations still have to have the ability to pay it. So what are they doing right now? They're taking on more debt to pay the debt that's owed. Do you think there's no limit to that? I mean, seriously, do you think there's no limit? Australia's pension funds, the world's fourth largest retirement pool, are seeking fresh places to deploy their record inflows. See, if they can make things through inflation look like people have more money to work with, they can keep this inflation thing going as long as they can keep growing debt. A debt-based system requires new debt. It's a Ponzi scheme. While they've been piling into unlisted assets like private credit, regulators are starting to tighten oversight of the often opaque area where valuations can be less frequent and disclosure patchy. And how about valuations can be more random? Can you see that this is an accident waiting to happen? Because this area, often opaque area, where valuations can be less frequent and disclosure patchy, I've shown you where banks are doing that too. On these assets that have no market, can't they just say that they're worth whatever they feel like it? And when you're looking at private credit, what is this? Don't you remember the unicorns? Worth a billion dollars, but losses as far as the eye can see. They don't need to make money. They're worth billions of dollars because why? Because private credit said so. Thank you, WeWork. I mean, that was really an accident flipping waiting to happen. Saw that from the beginning, the maturity mis mismatch and look what's happened, right? They're no more. Oops, too bad, so sad.